Okay, uh, welcome to another tutorial of the BlueSphere software application. Uh, it's been a while since I've actually done one of these video tutorials. Uh, we have recently released uh, version 6.7 of BlueSphere. Uh, BlueSphere is a, uh, a free and open source uh, ERP and EDI solutions application. Uh, you're welcome to download it. It's, it's free to use. You can download it from BlueSphere.com uh, and, it's, and it's absolutely free to use. Uh, if you're a consultant or you're a consulting company and you're looking uh, to uh, find a software to do implementation with, um, you're welcome to uh, distribute BlueSeer as needed and uh, you're encouraged to uh, provide implementation services for the ERP because it does offer both an ERP and uh, for BlueSeer. It does offer an ERP and an EDI solution. So uh, with that said, uh, let's open up BlueSeer and what we're going to look at today is... Uh, one of the new functionality, one of the new features that we've added of 6.7 is EDI workflow. Uh, workflow is simply a collection of actions that uh, allow you to either move files, manipulate files, or any other kind of action uh, from in the background uh, to, be, to be executed. Uh, I've given you some examples of some of the actions. Uh, you go to EDI workflow maintenance, and we're going to click new here. And here are all the actions that are possible. So you can copy a file, you can move a file, you can delete a file. And it can be just one action or a multiple actions, and you can do these in any order that you want to. So it's uh, really up to your, your discretion how you actually create uh, or define these actions within a workflow. And it really depends on your, uh, your, your business process that you're trying to achieve here. So with that said, let's actually run through an example. What we're going to do is uh, create a, an example with uh, three actions. Um, and one of those actions... Uh, keys off of an API call. Now, with the default download of uh, Blue Sear, there comes uh, a couple of default API calls, generic APIs. And we're going to call one of those, which goes out and gets IP information. And then we're going to copy that file once the file is downloaded. Uh, so we're calling a REST endpoint. We're going to get a JSON file back. And we're going to, uh, it's going to be stored in a directory. They're going to copy that directory to an archive, and then we're going to move that file to some other, just to, just to demonstrate that the multiple actions within a workflow. Okay, so um, let's look at the API call that we're going to be using first. So we'll go to API menu, API browse, that's API log, API browse. Okay, and I click run, and then there are several here. We're going to use ID 888, which is essentially, uh, it goes to ipinfo.io and it grabs uh, IP information. So you can actually run it from here. If you highlight this particular method, uh, you can click run. Oop, I don't, oh, I don't even have my internet connection set up here. Hold on one second. Uh, we're going to click run again, and we should get, yeah, there we go. So it basically reaches out to that IP address, and it, it brings back information. Uh, I'm looking at a specific IP directory here uh, of uh National Institute of Standards Technology, just a, just a generic IP of this institution, and it gives a CD region state. All this information within this JSON format. Okay, so we're going to go back here to this main, and we're going to choose, uh, pick 888, and we also need to know the method that we're going to use. So this is the method. I'm going to control C that guy. I keep forgetting it. All right, we're going to go back to EDI workflow, EDI workflow maintenance, click new. Let's, we're going to call it test, test description. We're going to enable it. And then we're going to, first thing that we're going to do is do the API call. So you click the, uh, the add button and it adds it. So if you highlight it here, the parameters will show up, the key value parameters in that will show up in the uh, key value maintenance table here. And all you have to do is assign values to these uh, standard parameters, these standard keys. So if you highlight the first key, uh, the ID that we're going to do was 888. Uh, and every time you update one of the keys, you have to click update key value. Uh, then you would click on the method, and the method was what we decided, uh, what I control C, which was get IP info, update key. And then the destination directory, uh, we're going to just chose C colon backslash temp, since it's on a Windows box. Uh, actually, we're going to choose C blue sear out directory, EDI out, which is our, should be already be there since you uh, did the install. Oh, by the way, you can uh, you can use forward slashes even on Windows boxes. 
and I prefer to use that because it makes it consistent between Linux and Windows. So C colon blue sear uh, EDI out directory and put an end um, tag on the on the end of that string here. Update key. Uh, if you don't put this in back, uh, forward slash, it will put it on there for you. And the source directory would be if you're actually posting a file to an API call. But in this case, we're actually doing a get. We're doing a retrieve. Okay, so I've done all that. I'm going to click add. Uh, and that's the first one. So let's look at the key we just created. Test. Highlight that. And then it's methods. Here's the values. That looks good. Okay, after that, uh, we're going to... Actually, I need to adjust this here. I'm going to put this as my API dot text. Update key. Click OK. Click update. Now, you can type in test and it comes right back up. Yeah, so that's the destination file for this API call. Okay, so after that, I'm going to highlight this because I'm going to use that in the next one. So I'm going to create another action that's going to copy the 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 file to um, an archive directory as the next action in this entire workflow. Uh, and so the source is going to be that file. The destination is going to be, oops, I didn't save it like I said I was going to do. Click update, that does it. Click on the next key. And the destination is going to be. Uh, I think I have an EDI out arc. What do I have here? C. Blue Sear EDI. I've got an out arc. Good. Okay. Out arc. And I'm going to give it the same file name. Click update key. And the append is going to be, I want to say no. A pin is a yes or no answer. You can put yes or no or true or false. I want to put no. Key. Okay, so that's the uh, click update. And we should have two actions now in our workflow. So API call. This looks good. And then finally, we're going to move the file to, uh, I think there was a directory called temp even under there. Nope, there's one called, uh, what else can I use here? Now let's create one. And this is just going to be another directory as an example that we're going to move it to. So we're going to do a file move so that it is removed out of this EDI out directory. And first key is EDI out. That's the source file we want to move. Update key. The destination is going to move to EDI temp. And that's where we're moving it to. The key. Uh, we're going to choose yes to override here. Update key. Click update. And now we should have all three uh, workflows. Well, all three actions within the one workflow. Okay, so we have API call. Sometimes you have to hit this, click this thing twice. Uh, we have the file copy and we have the file move. So these events, these actions will um, run consecutively within this entire workflow. So uh, what we can do from right here, we can actually run this, uh, run this executable, run this workflow from right here. So we're going to click run, and it says transaction complete. Uh, if you notice, there'll be a workflow log file. You can look there, and it'll give you some more information. Uh, status was successful, and these are the three action items. I'll give you a little more information on what was actually happening. Uh, so we should see a file that eventually landed in temp. Where's my temp directory? And there it is. It should not be in the out directory. And it's not. And there should be a copy in the out arc. And there it is. Uh, real quickly, I'm going to show you an adjustment to this to where you can put timestamps in your archive files. So we'll go back to workflow browse. Let's pick this guy back up. And we're going to go to the file copy. So we're copy, using file copy to copy it to the archive directory. But what we're going to do is uh, put a timestamp in this. Uh, and you can put
put a date timestamp in here by using the, uh, the parentheses sign uh, and put YYYMMDD, which is the format expression for year, month, and date. And I believe it's HH, capital HHMM for hour and minute. And then you have to put another percent sign. So what it's going to do is going to extrapolate the date time or interpolate the date time value into this string. Uh, and we're going to have my API dot date timestamp dot text or DT. Okay. And then click update. And then let's run that again. Uh, bring it back up. Click run. And there we have it. So we should have a file with a date. And there it is in the EDI out arc. It has the uh, date time stamp on it of uh, the date and time that we actually ran it. Uh, notice this time, yeah, this time I'm actually 1044. Okay, yeah, so that's how to actually create a workflow with various actions. And there's a lot of actions in here. Uh, this is relatively new, so there may be some, some hiccups or bugs. If you find any, please, please, please uh, report it to support at bluesir.com or go to the website, and there's some contact information there as well. Uh, so user feedback would be greatly, greatly appreciated. But, yeah, there's all kind of actions you can do here. You can encrypt, decrypt the file. Uh, file match move is pretty pretty nice to where you're actually matching. Uh, you don't have to have the know explicitly the entire name of the file. You can actually match with uh, regex expressions to, to match the file that you're actually trying to move. Uh, and one last thing, too. Uh, once you've got the workflow created, you can actually schedule that in the cron maintenance. Uh, and I'll actually show an example of that. You can actually create a, a test. Test uh, group is arbitrary. Call it arbitrary. Uh, the job class is a real specific thing you need to do here. You need to choose uh, job workflow as WKF, which is what these workflows are. And then the parameter is the actual uh, workflow ID that we created. We created a workflow ID of test. So that would be that test. Priority could be one. And then you put in a cron expression of when you want this to run. Uh, well, this right here is every two hours. You could run every five minutes. Uh, star, 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 question mark. Enabled. And then that job will run every, fi every five minutes. Click add. Uh, but the point is that you can actually have this. Uh, Bruce here does come with a cron job, a task scheduling job. And so the workflow that you create, you can run in, a, in the background at whatever frequency you so desire. The only caveat is that you have to have the cron service as a Windows service running in the background. So that has to be started up uh, that you leave running once. once uh, you start it up once and you don't have to worry about it. As a matter of fact, uh, services.msc. Uh, the cron service is here. I do have another video tutorial to show you how to create this service as a Windows service. Uh, and this job is actually running. But you need to make sure this job is actually running in order for this cron job to actually work. So uh, that kind of demonstrates the, the new functionality of the workflows. Uh, again, there is uh, it's real simple. There's workflow maintenance. You've got various actions you can do. Uh, you can do the browse, which, I, which, which will uh, show you a listing of all your workflows. And then you have a, a log file here that uh, shows you the events of when everything was happening. Oh, this is the second time that I ran that. Yeah. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, reach out to support at bluesear.com as far as an email goes. Uh, you go to help and about uh, once you download the application, and there's more contact information there. Again, this is a free, uh, free software. Feel free to use it. Feel free to distribute it. Feel free to provide your own implementation services for it. Just, just use it. All right. Thank you.